Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will talk about how we made yesterday's sketch firecracker gone wrong. Let's check it out. That's right, it really happened. Once, when I was a kid, and ever since then, I've been using one hand to do pretty much everything. Jokes aside though, my friend Isa actually did once forget to throw the one firecracker while we were shooting those slow motion shots, so that just goes to show you that this story is indeed realistic. Minus the blowing up hand part. Anyway, today we will go behind the scenes on how we created this short sketch from planning to shooting to post-production. Specifically break down the visual effects shot that you saw right at the end for which we used a combination of built-in effects and tracking with Mocha along with stock footage elements from Action VFX which is this project's sponsor. Action VFX provides a large and ever-growing collection of premium VFX stock footage elements and I say that based on my own experience of using their products. They have a Black Friday sale running from November 22nd at 8 p.m. EST until November 25th at 11.59 p.m. EST where they will have their entire library of assets 55% off for the entire duration of the sale. People with an annual subscription plan will also be able to get two times the amount of credits that they can use to get free assets. They have also released 10 new collections during this month in preparation for the sale so if you're interested in what we mentioned so far and more then go ahead and use the affiliate link in the description which will also help me out at no additional cost to you. Finally I want to thank Action VFX for collaborating with us over the past three years. Everyone I have talked to from their team is great so give them a visit and hopefully you'll be able to find something useful for your own projects. So before shooting, I usually like to have at least a shot list ready, if not a storyboard, because it really keeps things moving smoothly without having to think about what we already did, what's next, and so on. In this case, because we were shooting part of the video in my room, then it was very convenient because I could have my computer running on the side and keep track of all the shots we needed. But when we went outside, I switched to using the computer in my pocket, which is my phone. We had this very dodgy camera setup with a monitor on top for easy focus checking and shot compositions and the microphone mounted on the monitor arm's extra mounting point so we could capture the onset sound. For lighting we used an Aperture 120D Mark II which I'm using right now to shoot this stand-up video and had it bounce off the wall for pretty much all of the interior shots. Bounce lighting is usually much better because it gives a very broad and smooth ambient lift as opposed to directing the light straight to the subject. But of course, it all depends on what you're going for. For most of the interior shots, we were using a tripod and mainly captured detail shots because those were the main elements of the video. Hence, my friend Isa was not really visible up until the very end of the video where we see his hand go boom. We did have one incredibly high-end complex shot. Oh. There were some very fun moments during the shoot such as this one time where we had to use a light stand instead of a tripod because we couldn't get the camera high enough for the door shot so don't hesitate to come up with weird solutions as long as they're safe and get the job done. Not so safe though. 
Again, because the tripod wasn't reaching high enough, we cheated this shot by having Isa sit down on a chair. And because the background is out of focus and there's no point of reference, then you're unable to notice it in the final shot. And we use this as a match cut to transition to the outside without having to show him leaving the house. We're essentially jumping time. For the exterior, it was more of the same, getting mainly detailed shots of each element while using a diffuser to soften the sunlight that was backlighting Isa, which was eventually no longer needed because it was getting late and at some point we lost the sun completely. For the firecrackers popping up at the end of the video, we shot those at 120 frames per second, which is only possible in 1080p with the Sony a7S II, and it also crops the frame. But the crop was actually doing me a favor because I was able to sit back a bit further and be safer. Although I did make sure to take extra precautions. For projects that involve visual effects, I usually like to have a locked edit first and then start working on the VFX shots. That way, for the most part, I know exactly how many frames each VFX shot has and I save myself the trouble of doing any unnecessary work. Also, considering the tight deadline, I worked on having an edit ready ASAP as well as added sound design to really tie everything together. Sound design is also something I usually like to leave for the end if I'm gonna be doing it myself. But in this case, it was very important that I integrated early in the process so that I could better see if the cuts were working as intended. And sure enough, after I added the sounds that we captured on set, as well as sound effects from various sources, everything felt so much better. So a tip, I guess, if you're not really feeling your edit, then try mixing in some sounds so that you don't have to imagine sound in your head, especially when you're editing fast paced scenes with lots of cuts that rely heavily on sound design. And now let's break down the visual effects shot. We made sure to use a tripod so we wouldn't have to worry about tracking the camera motion, but then be able to add the handheld camera movement in post by shooting a couple of squares drawn on a whiteboard, tracking it, and then applying that movement to the footage. We also got a clean blade. For VFX shots, I like to color correct them first so that I can more easily match the effects and do the color grade last. Different people can have different workflows, especially if there's a colorist involved with the project, but this is just how I like to do it. To start off, I first tracked Isa's arm by using the free version of Mocha that comes with After Effects CC versions and applied that tracking data to a null object. Mocha uses surface tracking, so it's much more ideal in this case compared to the point tracker of After Effects. Then I used the solid as a mat on the original plate so I could cut it out and reveal the clean plate underneath and made sure to parent the solid to the hand track null object so that it follows along. Then I took a freeze frame of the arm at the moment of the explosion, rotoscoped it, and pre-composed it. Whee! I was then able to use the shatter effect to make it explode in a bunch of pieces by tweaking options such as setting the pattern to glass for more variation on the shapes and making them thick by increasing the extrusion depth. Repetitions to increase the amount of pieces, force values to determine how strong the explosion is and where it originates from, physics to have the pieces fall down faster and give them some randomness, textures to give the pieces a red tint on the sides and on the back so you're still able to see the hand texture from the original footage but as they spin around they give the impression of inside body parts, lighting to match the lighting direction from the original shot and finally used a roughen edges effect to give the pieces more organic edges. I then duplicated this layer and added more repetitions tweak the force and physics options to give it some variation with bigger and smaller chunks. For the firecracker explosion, I used a few stock footage elements from action VFX such as spark bursts and explosions, spell hits which I colorized to make them look like smoke, those along with various blood splatter elements and optical flares made for a very juicy explosion. Literally. I even manually track this emergency flare element to the firecracker before it explodes, although it's not really that noticeable considering the fast pace. For the wound, I used elements from this gore textures pack and blended them with each other with masks and roughened edges to achieve a more complex texture as well as parented them to the hand track null. I used this throat slit element to have some blood drip along the arm and warped it with the mesh warp effect so it looked like it was flowing properly and of course this was also parented to the hand track null. I used these limp blood elements to shoot blood all over the place. You could say this looks a bit unrealistic but I was going for an over the top effect. To go so above and beyond, I used the CC particle systems effect to generate these tiny blood particles, parented the producer position to a new particles origin null, which was parented to the hand track null in order to follow the arm, while also being able to modify the particles origin. We sure got a lot of mileage out of that one single hand track null. For the blood on Isa's body, we first made sure to have him take off his jacket while shooting so we could better see the blood on his white t-shirt, but also because I wouldn't have to deal with difficult tracking for the jacket. 
I wanted to add blood splatters on the t-shirt, face and arm, so for that I use the power mesh tool that comes with Mocha Pro. This is a fantastic tool for sticking elements on deforming surfaces, so if you want to know more then check out this great tutorial from Film Riot, which covers a few fun examples in more detail. And of course I couldn't resist a good old lens splatter blood effect, so I use the camera lens blur effect to take it out of focus and give it this beautiful bokeh effect. I then used various blending modes to make all the elements blend with each other, as well as color corrected them, add a slight blur to match the original footage sharpness and even added fake motion blur to most of the elements with real smart motion blur which is a third-party paid plugin but there's also the pixel motion blur plugin which is built into after effects but it does run slightly slower finally i brought this comp into another comp and added some camera shake by manually animating the position and by using a wiggle expression over a few seconds and those were pretty much all the details for the exploding arm visual effects shot after that i sent it back over to premiere pro for a final color grade and it was done. Visual effects in movies is the reason I first got into this whole thing so it was really fun working on this project and being able to share the process with you guys. I want to thank Action VFX for the collaboration and again make sure to check out their Black Friday sale by following the affiliate link in the description. I hope this was entertaining in some way and that you were able to get something out of it even though it's a BTS slash VFX breakdown video instead of a step-by-step -step tutorial. Huge thanks to my friend Isa for helping me with this. I'll leave links to his socials in the description. Thank you for watching and being patient all the way through. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.